Hey everyone, welcome back to Jashelle Tech TV. In this video, I'm chatting with Jamie, who is a tech professional. Jamie was one of my team leads uh, back when I was in coding boot camp in 2019, and we've kept in touch since then. A couple of years ago, Jamie featured one of my blog posts on the website of the company where he works, which was pretty cool. And I'll be sure to link the article in, in the description. So in this video, I'll be getting to know about Jamie's current tech role, and hopefully our chat can help anyone who may be interested in learning more about this role and also help others learn about different kinds of roles in the tech industry. And with that said, hi, Jamie. Hey. So we'll start with some introductory questions. Okay. So what is your current role and how long have you been in this role? I am a product marketing manager at a startup in Silicon Valley called Anonymous. Uh, and I've been a product marketing manager for, I think, about two years now. Um, but before that, I was a developer advocate at the same company. Nice. So is that so did you get a promotion or did you just move into a different role? Yes. So uh, kind of a promotion. It, it's a startup. So when I joined the company, it was really small. It was I think I was like the sixth person. Uh, so it was, and now we're at like 30 people. So, wow. um, yeah, it's, it's been cool to have been part of something when it was so small and to see it get big, you know, that's, that's, it's an exciting thing to be a part of. That is pretty cool. And yeah. have you always worked in the tech industry or was there a life before tech? There was a life before tech. I was, uh, a, I was an actor. I was in theater. I, I did a lot of theater. So. Uh, yeah, a very, a very different life before tech. Um, uh, it, it's definitely like a hard left turn <laughs> into the tech world. <laughs> and do you still get to do any acting or did you just completely let it go? I I haven't got to do any acting for, you know, for a long time now since I started doing tech. However, I have worked with some theaters on like the production side, like as a producer, um, getting to kind of, uh, you know, decide what kind of shows uh, a season of, will feature, um, work on like advertisements, uh, work a little bit on like the social media side of things for them. So I've still, you know, had theater is still a part of my life, I guess. I just haven't had to act or haven't been able to act. Okay. So what kind of company do you work for as a product marketing manager? Is it a tech-based company? I think you said it was a tech-based yeah. company. Okay, okay. It's a tech company. Uh, we sell a very technical product. Mm -hmm. um, it's specifically for software engineers to use in their applications that they're building. So for like mobile apps, web apps, IoT applications, pretty much if you're building any kind of app, we make software for you to use. Okay. What kind of technology is it or what kind of tool is it for the developers? Yeah. So um, a lot of people are probably, if you're, you know, in the tech space, you probably are already familiar with like UI component libraries. Oh, these yeah. Are things, yeah. Like, so like Tailwind is a popular one or Bootstrap. And these are things that developers use to like have pre-built buttons, pre-styled like dashboards and widgets and things like that. So that's something people are already familiar with. So what my company, Onimus, does is we make essentially functionality components. So like after you press a button, we're what happens after the button press. So um, like login is a common feature that a lot of almost every application needs. Uh, so we build all of that functionality, all that login functionality. Uh, OCR or um, optical character recognition is a kind of another feature that's prominent in a lot of apps more and more these days. So a, a lot of common app features, the way that there are a lot of common UI components, buttons and calendars and things, we build the functionality components. Nice. Okay. Yeah. So in, with, in this role, do you currently work remote or in office? I am remote, which is great. If anyone out there who take one thing away from this, try and get a remote role. That's maybe, maybe not, maybe there's some caveats there, but I personally am really excited that I get to uh, work remotely. I love remote, so I agree. Yeah, all right. <laughs> so what's your, what's your favorite part about working remote? Um, just the freedom to kind of, uh, you know, for example, I, I, I lived in Tennessee when I got this job, um, it, which is in, in California, you know, Silicon Valley, role which completely it's it's a the kind of thing that 
you know, I would never have that kind of opportunity in a pre-remote working world. Uh, so it, it's something that it, it opens up opportunities. And I get to, I'm, I'm in Oregon right now. So I moved from Tennessee to Oregon. So I, I can like travel when I want to, and I can work from wherever I am. You know, I've gone on road trips in New England. Um, I've gone to uh, actual England, literal England, old England, London. Um, and I've still been able to do my job. And that would just be impossible to do if you're not working remotely. Um, so I really love the, the freedom that I, I get to have. And I get to be around you know, my fiance. I'm engaged. I'm newly engaged. Uh, she also, yeah, thank you. She works remotely. She's uh, an English teacher. So we get to be around each other and uh, it's great. If I had to sum it up in one word, you know, freedom, I guess. Right. Yeah. Love that. And so what led you to pursue product marketing? Yeah, so uh, like you mentioned, we were at you know coding boot camp together. So originally, I got into the role. Uh, you know, I wanted to be a software engineer. I wanted to get into software engineering or tech just in general, right? Um, I, I wanted to break into that, and I had been doing software, a little bit of software engineering, or I shouldn't say that, app development on the side for a while for other actors. Actors needed websites, so I was doing that, and I wound up making a lot more money doing that than I ever did acting. Um, so I wanted to do, wanted to do the boot camp just to kind of, you know, up level my skills. And from there I got a software engineering role and I, I enjoyed that. But then I heard about this thing called, um, developer advocacy or being a tech evangelist. And that's where you just get to talk about tech. And, uh, I enjoy working as a software engineer, but I think I like talking about tech even more than actually working on it. So when I heard about that role as a developer advocate, it's like this is this is like a great synthesis between, you know, software development. I still get to work on software, uh, but I also get to like interact with people in the community. And uh, so I got into that at this company. Again, it was like six people and um, product marketing just kind of it was a natural sort of, I, I sort of slotted into product marketing naturally from developer advocacy. Now there are different kinds of developer advocates. Some are more like community moderators. Um, some are more on the marketing side, which kind of where I ended up. And so it just, it was a natural progression from software engineer, developer advocacy, uh, product marketing management. So are there, is there any overlap in these roles? Um, yeah. So yeah, uh, developer advocacy and product marketing, you know, depending on the company, uh, they can be very similar or very different. You know, a product marketing manager may never interact with a developer advocate at a different company or a larger company. Um, these roles tend to be, I think, you know, when you think of a software engineer, you, know, you get hired as a React developer. You pretty much know what you're going to do. You're going to be a React developer. It doesn't matter if you're at a startup or you're at a you know a Fortune 100 company. You're going to be working on React apps, maybe most of the time. Uh, but as a, a product marketing manager or a developer advocate, I think these roles are a little more fluid. And depending the, on the size of the company or the company's focus, what you wind up doing or what your focus is. It, it could be very different, I think. But in, in my case, the developer advocate, uh, as a developer advocate, I worked on the website. Um, I worked on uh, going out and talking to engineers at um, you know conferences and things like that. And so I still have a lot of that. I still do a lot of that as a product marketing manager. And again, part of that's because the company is on the smaller side. So at a larger company, I might not do those things as much. Got it. Okay. So next, let's dive into experience, education, and the hiring process. So what were some of the required skills for this position? So for me, I kind of, I, I was luckier than I think a lot of uh, other people who might end up as product marketing managers uh, in terms of being able to get this role um, because it was sort of a non-traditional path into it. Uh, I came from, you know, software development to developer advocate. And then because the company was so small, um, there just weren't that, there weren't enough people to, 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 you know, to take over marketing. Now, when I say take over marketing, it wasn't like I'm, I'm the VP of marketing. I was still reporting to, you know, our CEO. And then we hired a director of demand generation. She's now like my direct boss. Um, but so 
there, I, I think typically, probably, uh, certainly we've hired another product marketing manager to help me and has joined the team and she has a master's degree in marketing. Uh, so having a degree in marketing, I think obviously is a, is a great way to get into a product marketing manager role or at least into those initial uh, positions. So definitely that's, I think, probably the most natural, regular career path. Um, I do think though, especially um, in like a tech, if you're a product marketing manager for something very techy, very heavy, heavily techy, um, which is what Onimus is, you know, these, these, these functional components. Um, I think that's maybe one of the cool things about uh, what I bring to it is that I, I'm really, I was a software engineer. You know, I, I know how to use this stuff and I understand it at a, at a deep technical level that maybe someone who comes from a traditional marketing background wouldn't, wouldn't, uh, you know, have that same level of understanding. So it's a, I, I have a non-traditional skill set and definitely a non-traditional background. Mm -hmm. um, I don't have a college degree. So again, I feel really lucky to to be in the position that I'm in. So nice. So there was kind of just a combination of things that helped you in that. So yeah. a small company, um, you're exactly. kind of a triple threat coder and marketing person. Yes. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> I, having coming from a theater background, hearing being called a triple threat is is wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> I was not a triple threat as an actor. So hearing that, that's nice. <laughs> yeah. So it sounds like, so if somebody was coming into the company now mm -hmm. to apply for this, like yeah. let's just say they put out the position now, it sounds like they, they will place some emphasis on prior experience or education um, as well as skill set. Yeah, absolutely. And okay. I, I think, you know, if I was in charge, if I was dictator of hiring, everywhere i would definitely put less of an emphasis on traditional education obviously i'm one of those people who doesn't have that traditional education background um i totally get you know the the idea it's when you have hundreds or thousands of people applying to the same position having you know a certificate that says i have i met these minimum requirements i understand how that can be useful um but yes in general if you're really interested in product marketing management uh, having that a degree in, in product marketing or, uh, you know, a, a degree of any kind, we still live in a world where that's really going to be helpful to you. Did anything else, uh, just additionally, do you think anything else kind of helped you prepare to? Oh, sure. So just in a, in a general sense, aside from having a degree, I think like the kind of skills that you'll need as a product marketing manager, either in this kind of, you know, for this kind of role at a very heavy tech company or in any kind of product marketing manager role. I think, you know, being creative, being a good writer, um, having some kind of uh, skills with something like Photoshop or, you know, Adobe Illustrator, something like that, video editing skills, um, those kinds of creative uh, skills, I think are gonna serve you really well, so. Uh, I think probably, and especially for for an entry level product marketing kind of role, I don't think necessarily you always have to have like a, you know, you don't have to come to the interview with here's a selection of my past blog posts or my past ad campaigns or whatever. But for a product marketing manager role, I think very often you might be asked to provide samples of your work, uh, that kind of thing, whether written or in the form of video or art or something like that. Got it. So mm -hmm. roughly, what was the general starting salary range being offered for this position? So for me, I joined as a developer advocate. So that was 80,000 I uh, got as a developer advocate. Now that's kind of low, um, but it was a small company and I was in Tennessee as opposed to having to live in you know, Silicon Valley. Yeah. Um, and that was bumped up to 100,000 when I first became a product marketing manager. Again, kind of on the low side. Uh, for what you probably can expect uh, for a, a Silicon Valley, California role. Yeah. Um, but it, it's in the ballpark of probably what you can ex expect, you know, anywhere in the country. Um, for again, for California specifically, on the low side. For anywhere else in the country, I'm, you're probably looking at around that range, especially if you don't have a ton of prior experience, which I didn't, so. Got it. And yeah. so... So did you have to interview at all or did you just move into this role? 
I got to, again, that goes back to being really lucky is where I kind of got to move into this role from the developer advocate position. You know, I had already been interviewed for that role. I got the job. And so I kind of had everyone's trust at that point. Um, I was really close with the CEO, of, you know, the director of engineering, the VP of engineering. Uh, and at that point, heck, they were all like still coding. Now, at 30 people, it feels like this vast, <laughs> it feels like an enterprise compared to that. Um, so it, I think I kind of had to, uh, especially for my CEO, I think he was he made the decision at the time. Uh, he was definitely, I think, a little nervous of putting someone in this position who did not have experience. But I kind of mentioned it earlier as as a developer advocate, I kind of just wound up in a position where I was managing like the website and a lot of, you know, ad campaigns and things, not because necessarily that's what always the developer advocate is going to do, but because it was a small startup and everyone takes on a lot of roles. So I think he trusted me from like a creative standpoint and, you know, he had seen I had, you know, how I'd been handling other things. So he was, he he was a, maybe I think cautious, but I think he's, he's become, you know, a, a supporter of me. Not that he wasn't then, but I think he he's, he's uh, thinks he made a good decision, which I'm glad of. <laughs> That's amazing. And yeah. I'm, that, that, that's awesome. Yeah. So let's talk more about your day in the life as a pro, as a product marketing manager. Mm -hmm. So do you primarily focus on managing product marketing or do you also oversee and manage a team of people? So uh, for me personally, and, and again, it kind of goes back to what I said before, where product marketing is going to be a little different depending on what company you work at and how what the size of the company is. So in my case, um, I do have, I work with just, it's a really small team. There's two people I'm gonna be working with on any given day, uh, as far as the marketing team goes. Um, of course, I can interact with the sales team or with the engineering team. Uh, and then what a day looks like for me, it depends. So for example, one thing I'm working on right now is a, a Google partnership. So uh, becoming a Google, our, making our company a, a Google build partner. Um, companies, uh, customers, can, if they're using like Google as their cloud provider, they work with a, a certified Google build partner, they get huge rebates. So uh, that's one thing that uh, a lot of companies try to do is they become a Google build partner or an, or an Azure partner or AWS partner. Uh, so our goal is to become a partner with all those top cloud providers. So I'm trying to, uh, you know, fulfill all of the criteria to become a partner that's, you know, involving meeting with different people at Google and trying to schedule different meetings and certification processes. Uh, so that's something that I'm working on right now. Uh, I work on the website a lot, so I, I write a lot of blogs. Mm -hmm. I, again, small company, so I write them, I edit them, I create the little graphics for them, uh, and I post them on the website. Um, I try and fix little website bugs. Uh, we have like a Kinsta cloud instance, that's our, our web host, um, so I manage that. Um, and then I work a lot with, what is it, what, what I'm blinking out, SEMrush. Uh, SEMrush is an SEO tool. So for anyone who doesn't know, uh, SEO or search engine optimization is kind of how you rank on Google. So what happens is, uh, just take like a blog, for example, right? You write a blog about refrigerators. Well, there are keywords that Google will recognize as, okay, this blog has a lot to do with refrigerators. So it'll feature the blog about your blog higher in Google results than another blog that you know is not as optimized. So something like SEMrush is a way to kind of measure uh, how well your content is performing. Uh, it helps you like identify keywords that you can use in your content. You can uh, track your progress. You can track your competitors' progress. So I, I use SEMrush a lot, uh, different projects in there to kind of monitor all that stuff. Um, I use Canva a lot uh, to create like advertisements. So just last week, actually, we started a new campaign on LinkedIn and I actually used Canva to create uh, the content for those ads. Um, now, sometimes we, you know, give that kind of creative content to uh, different, you know, partners that we hire or different freelancers or agencies who do that stuff for us. So uh, I might be working with them, uh, you know, to create video content while I'm working on, you know, uh, content for LinkedIn. Um, 
So it, it gets very busy. Does any aspect of your work involve working with clients or is it all internal facing? So almost, I would say in most cases, a product marketing manager is not going to be dealing with clients in any okay. kind of capacity. Now, in my case, it's a little different. Again, I joined the company when it was very small. So uh, we do have a sales engineer now, uh, but I'm still sort of like this, almost like this tech evangelist kind of position for the company. So uh, if our sales engineer is like sick, or if we have multiple sales calls, I might jump in to a sales call as like the tech evangelist um, and, and be kind of the, the the guy who answers the tech questions or, you know, perform a demo or something like that. Uh, but for most marketing, man, that's, that's just a small company thing rather than a product marketing manager thing, I think. So almost never will, you know, you as a product marketing manager have to do that stuff. And it's also because of my background, right? Is that having that software development background. Okay. So you mentioned a couple of the tools that you work with. So what are some additional tools and technologies that you work with daily? Yeah, so I mentioned uh, SEMrush, uh, Canva. Um, probably you're gonna work with something called Outlook a lot. So that's for scheduling emails. Now sales will also, depending on your company and how it's structured. Again, it's where each company might have treat things a little differently. What, whose responsibility is what um, I've been able to work with. One of the benefits is the, the coming into this role, I've been able to, we've brought in a lot of like, um, uh, kind of like interim VPs of marketing with tons of experience. Now I have a director of demand gen to kind of like, I, I've been learning a lot from them. And so they all have slightly different experiences and, and a different understanding of where boundaries are drawn, whatever. So uh, yeah. in our case, we use Outlook a lot to kind of schedule uh, email messages, email campaigns, that kind of thing. Um, so, uh, Outlook, SEMrush, Canva, I use something called Boxy SVG. That's a little, just, uh, it's, it's a random thing, but, uh, it lets me edit SVGs and SVGs are, you know, just, uh, it's like a, it's a, it's a image file. Yeah. Um, so I use that a lot. I use Photoshop, uh, Adobe Illustrator. Um, I use some video editor. I have used video editors in the past. Uh, Gosh, I'm blanking on the name of the video editor that I used, um, but it's one of the more common ones. Uh -huh. um, so there's, you'll probably use a video editor uh, if you're working on video ads or things like that. Um, obviously, uh, Microsoft Teams or Slack, if you're working remotely and you need to communicate with your team, you're definitely going to use one of those, I think. There's another kind of like team conversation platform out there. I don't know of it. Um, those are the two big ones. Um, let's see, anything else that I'm missing? I use WordPress a lot. Our website is WordPress. So uh, I'm in there mucking around, editing things, fixing things. So you don't do much coding anymore, right? No kind of coding languages? I don't do much coding anymore. Uh, okay. I do, I do sometimes, actually, this week, Coincid oh, um, PowerPoint. I wind up working on a lot of PowerPoint presentations, uh, basically like the sales deck. Marketing is generally responsible for the sales deck and kind of creating that messaging for the sales team. Uh, so I do work a lot in PowerPoint. And in this case, I did actually get into VS code and was writing some code uh, for a, a very specific kind of, a couple of slides for a, a, a prospect. Um, so I, I do get in VS Code sometimes. Uh, I have in the past worked on creating demos for customers. Now, again, as a, a normal product marketing manager, normal, uh, most product marketing managers probably aren't gonna be like coding demos themselves. They may be responsible for writing requirements for demos. Um, so that's definitely a possibility. But um, if you are more on the techie side, and again, that's a strength that I have that I, I'm really proud of. And I think that kind of makes me unique. And I would definitely encourage other product marketing managers in the tech world to become, you know, to, to code and be familiar with if, if it's relevant to their product. So being able to actually, you know, not just write requirements, but then code it myself. And that was really cool. And it, it was, you know, a valuable skill to have. So I have done it in the past, but generally speaking, uh, I'm not doing it as much. Got it. A lot of the tools sounds like you had to learn on the job. Yes. 
I didn't have a ton of experience with things like Outlook uh, or even Salesforce. Salesforce is more of a sales team tool, but uh, you'll work with like uh, exporting, you know, emails and names and prospects, uh, sales qualified leads, marketing qualified leads. You know, you'll take them out of Salesforce, put them into outreach, take them out of outreach, put them into like a LinkedIn ad campaign. So there's a lot of uh, all, all that stuff I wasn't familiar with. And uh, it is complex as coming from software engineering, learning how to work with Salesforce. I mean, it was intimidating for me as a as a person with, you know, it was a software engineer. Salesforce was intimidating. So uh, so it, so are uh, Excel spreadsheets also intimidating to me still. Um, so, yeah, a lot of learning on the job. If you already know that stuff, if you're already super familiar with Salesforce or you can get familiar with it before you apply to your, you know, product marketing manager job and become an Excel spreadsheet expert. That's going to serve you really well in your role, probably. Okay. So how is work typically assigned to you as a product marketing manager? Do you have the flexibility to take ownership of specific initiatives based on priorities and objectives? Yeah, absolutely. So I, I we've kind of broken it down where I typically am responsible for you know one set of things. We have another product marketing manager who is responsible for another set of things. We have a director of demand gen. Uh, she is you know our boss, and then we bring in freelancers or interns or agencies that you know we kind of direct them on what we need from them. So. Uh, I have a lot of freedom to kind of say, I want to work on this thing, or uh, you know, I have an idea, I would like to pursue this. Yeah, it, I, I, that's one thing that I, I value in this role is, is the freedom I have to be creative and to yeah. kind of, well, yeah, I really like that. Um, and definitely in, in any company, as a product marketing manager, you're, you're going to have some degree of freedom. You're typically, you're a manager, you're going to either be managing uh, you know, an external team, an agency that you've hired. Um, we, uh, for example, we work with a, a PR agency, so we coordinate with them to you know set up interviews with uh, you know different media organizations uh, to create like campaigns for social media. Um, so you you'll either be doing that, or you will have a team underneath you that is you know your your bloggers, your writers, your graphic designers, and, and you'll be responsible for them. So what's a common challenge you face in your role and what's your approach to solving or addressing it? Um, gosh, I think it it's almost, I want to say writer's block, but it's more than just writing writer's block. It's everything block, you know, it's creativity block because ultimately that's what, you know, being in this kind of marketing role is it's, it's how do I convince people or how do I tell people why this product is cool and what's exciting about it and how do I get people to listen or pay attention and so you know writing creating graphics doing videos it's all in service to that idea uh, so if you don't have a good idea for a blog or if you don't have a good idea for a video you're you're stalled out so I would say that's I think one of the the biggest challenges is is not just having the idea but also, you know, struggling with the quality of the quality of the ideas that you do have, you know. Uh, so, yeah, if, if that makes sense. Yeah, it can be kind of abstract. It's not, you know, yeah. it's not always straightforward. And yeah. you have to think of these strategies. So um, how do you address that? How do you solve it? How do you get through the blocks? So I, I really think it's about like forcing yourself, you know, sometimes there's a Stephen King kind of famously says that he just sits down and he writes for an hour or however many hours every day. It doesn't matter if he feels like it or not, he just makes himself do it. And uh, I, I think it's very similar, whether you're actually writing a white paper or a blog or whether you're trying to come up with an idea for an ad campaign, uh, you know, sit down and write out 10 ideas or draw 10 illustrations for an ad. Um, yeah, it, it's about just making yourself come up with something. And then hopefully you have a team that, you know, you can share your ideas with and yeah. brainstorm with. And uh, that, that's really important too. So you do you have those go-to people that you can go to where yeah. you're like, yeah. Yeah. hey, what do you think? I, 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 yeah, exactly. That's really important to me is to have that uh, group of people. And it doesn't have to be, you know, it, you know, it can be really 
depending on your company and and what your level of freedom is, you know, it doesn't even have to be another marketing person. It can be someone that you're close to. I would say always try and build relationships with everyone in the company, everyone you're interacting with, because anyone can have a good idea and anyone can recognize a good idea. You don't have to be a, a marketing person to understand, you know, an idea is uh, compelling. So if you, especially in, in my case, where we're trying to sell to engineers so and uh, engineering leaders. So being able to go to the engineering team and be like, this makes sense to you um, and getting the feedback, that's really important. So, yeah, I, I am lucky that I have that on my team. Okay. And how is success measured in your role? Uh, essentially, what is used to evaluate effectiveness in marketing strategies? So there are, uh, uh, you know, ultimately you want, you want customers, you want to be generating customers. You can have these little benchmarks along the way, like, you know, a click through rate, like how many people click on an ad, uh, you know, that's, that's a good metric to measure if an ad, uh, is compelling to people through clicking on it. That's what click through rate means. So yeah, they click through it, but then if they're not, you know, filling out a form at the website they're linked to, well, then that's a problem. Something went wrong. So something like click through rate by itself is not the end all be all for, you know, metrics. It's ultimately how many customers are you getting? Um, so at our company, it's, I think, uh, it's 40% of all of the, of all of the, the customers that we get are generated by marketing rather than, than by sales. And that it, it depends on the company. They might have, there might be different metrics at different companies. Uh, but that is ours and it's based on, again, a lot of, a lot of feedback and input from the, the marketing veterans and, and experts that we've uh, been lucky enough to have come in and, you know, contribute and consult for us. Okay. And so do you have, do you uh, set specific goals uh, with your team or just with your department? Oh, yeah. Uh yeah, so and you know it can be little things like uh, you know how many meetings do we want to get? Do we want to set you know out of this campaign? Now again, setting a meeting is great if it doesn't. At some point, it becomes you know getting sales. The meeting is you know ultimately you know, marketing wants to get sales. The meeting it's up to sales to close, right? So uh, you know setting meetings is is kind of our big, our big personal goal at Anonymous, the marketing team at Anonymous, we want to set those meetings. So, uh, you know, when we start a campaign, we want to say, okay, this campaign will be a success if this is how many meetings we set, or this is the range of meetings we set. Um, some campaigns aren't about necessarily setting meetings. Uh, you know, there, there are things called awareness campaigns, where it's just about building awareness uh, for a product or in our case, just Anonymous, the company I work for in general. Uh, so awareness campaigns are a little more qualitative where it's not something that you can measure quite as easily. Now, there are ways to measure it, you know, website traffic, things like that. But um, it's it's not as quantitative as something like, I want this number of meetings from this, you know, ad spend on this campaign. So outside of sale, the sales team, do you have any other teams that you meet with or collaborate with on projects um, to accomplish their yeah. task or solve certain problems? Uh, definitely the sales team is is the one where we meet with the most. You know, we have weekly enablement meetings where we talk about, hey, what do you guys need from us that can help you, you know, close deals or, you know, get a deal going in the first place. Um, but also, uh definitely meeting with the engineering team uh, to understand like how does this product work um i don't know how often a someone who isn't like super technical will work closely with with the engineering team but i think anyone in the product marketing role in kind of a, a, in a company with a heavy you know tech focused product will wind up working with the engineering team at least a little bit if not, if only just to understand the product at a deeper level and being being able to talk about it intelligently. Um, but at Anonymous, we're lucky enough that uh, we get to interact with them pretty regularly to kind of get updates on the product and, and uh, you know, how things are going. So what is a tip that you would give to someone who is entering the tech field or maybe already in the tech field and considering a role as either a product marketing manager or developer advocate? 
advocate in general, what do you think could help them prepare for roles like this? Yeah, so I think, you know, I've mentioned it a little bit already, is that one thing that I I brought to the role that I, I think is a differentiator that's unique that not a lot of people have who become product marketing managers is that I was a software engineer and I know how to code. So if you are a software engineer or you, you work, you know, with tech regularly, I, I think being able to showcase that, you know, that's a strength. And I think that you should, you know, emphasize that in your interviews is that you act, you understand what, you know, presuming you're getting into a product marketing manager position at a company where they're selling that kind of thing, you know, that's, that's a strength for you to be able to say, I understand this at a really deep level. And I can speak to that in, in blogs or on video in ways that a, a lay person uh, wouldn't be able to. So definitely it really emphasized that strength. But in general for everybody, I think being a strong writer um, is is really important. Um, and that translates to, to you know, being, uh, you know, writing scripts for video. So it's not just like writing a blog, it's, you know, writing for video. Even if you're not the person talking, you could be writing a script or an outline for someone else. Um, it relates to, you know, writing eBooks or white papers, uh, writing website copy. So I, I think writing is a, is a really, really important strength uh, for, for everyone in the product marketing manager position. And being a good editor too. Not everyone will have to be their own editor, but if you can be your own editor, you know, that's again, it, it, it makes you stand out. And then as for a developer advocate, I think um, in general, uh, I had, you know, depending on the developer advocate role, some people want a developer advocate who already has like a, a an inbuilt community. You know, uh, I've seen uh, job job postings for developer advocates that request, you know, make it a, a requirement that you have a certain amount of followers on Twitter or something like that. Mm -hmm. So building uh, your presence on social media, you want to be a developer advocate is really important because it's going to open up pretty much every developer advocate role. Now, that's not a requirement for every kind of developer advocate, but if you already have that, then you're going to be sad. It's going to make you much more attractive as a, as a developer advocate. Uh, and then for both product marketing manager and developer advocate, just being able to talk with people um, and, and being easy to get along with, that doesn't mean you always, you know, that you're a doormat or something that you won't, you know, stand up for, you know, what you believe in or what you think is right, but just being someone that people want to talk to and share things with, because it's, it's a very collaborative role. And if you're, yep. uh, you're not willing to, if you're not friendly or, or willing to hear people out, it, uh, neither one is probably the, the right role for you. You just kind of want to be by yourself and do your own thing. Uh, I don't think either one's right for you. So a developer advocate, could you explain just a little bit what that is? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, in general, what you're going to be doing is kind of taking the feedback from the community, whether that's, you know, I mentioned you have that inbuilt following already on Twitter or LinkedIn or whatever, you'll take that feedback to your engineering team and say, hey, this is what I'm hearing. Engineers think about our product or their problems in general. Uh, how can we address those problems with our product or how can we fix the problems with our product as it exists? Um, there might be already like forums or uh, you know discussion channels, a Discord for a product or a company already, and you might wind up being kind of like a moderator for them or for for that channel, and uh, you know just managing posts, actually talking with the community on a forum. Um, so it, it that's kind of I think of what the base is for a developer advocate. From there. Uh, you might go to events and you know talk to developers there. You might give a lot of talks. Oftentimes, developer advocates are expected to try and give talks at conferences and things like that to kind of raise not just their own profile, but the company's profile. Um, you'll wind up probably managing the... Uh, you might wind up managing the website to some degree, uh, building demos, uh, being on sales calls, uh, and... and kind of explaining how the product works to prospective clients and that kind of thing. Uh, 
it, developer advocate role can can really change based on the company. It can be more on the marketing side. It can be more on the community management side, um, or it can be some of both. So both jobs, you really have to be a people person and you're kind of on, in a sense, with the developer advocate, is it kind of like you're kind of on the front lines as far as yeah. the product goes? Yes. Um, so you got to be willing to, again, be a people person. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. For a product marketing manager versus developer advocate, as far as, you know, interacting with with people goes, it, the, the clients, developer advocate is going to definitely be interacting with the actual clients a lot more than a product marketing manager is. I think we already talked about that, that an average product marketing manager is not really going to interact with clients. But a developer advocate is, as you said, on the front lines, either on social media or on the company's own forums or probably both. And then actually at events uh, and, you know, talking to people on the floor, giving talks, that kind of thing. Okay, nice. Thank you for explaining that. If anyone wanted to ask additional questions about becoming a product marketing manager or developer advocate or learn more about you and your tech journey, do you have a website or social media pages that you'd like to share? Uh, yeah, I do have a website, jamiegoodnight.com. It's very, very easy to remember. Um, there is a contact page, so you can message me on there and I'll get that. Um, and that's probably the easiest way to, to, to find me and talk to me. Okay, sounds good. So that wraps up the questions. Thank you so much, Jamie, for sharing what you do in your role and chatting with me today. Keep up the great work with everything that you're doing. And you provided some very valuable information today in our chat. Um, if anyone has any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments and you can feel free, Jamie, to follow up with anyone here in the comments section. And thank you everyone so much for watching and see you in the next video.